So first of all, thank you, Lenny, so much for, for agreeing to do this video. This means a lot to me. And this is like two worlds colliding or blending together. I'm really looking forward to this. So whatever, you're, whatever you can give me, I'll take it all. And I'm very happy to, to be here. Well, I'm, you know, to say the same thing, I'm very happy that, uh, that we made this connection. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm honored to be a part of this video. This is something no one's ever done before, you know. So this is good. This is good. So. Let's get started. I'm going to introduce you first, Bob Kampka. This is my senior most student. And we're going to show you how to implement our hand deflections, our hand evasions with more punch pull back type of scenarios to where you can learn how to do the hand deflection and, and how you can build from that into other things that could be used more street applicable or even in sport fighting. The first thing that we're going to do, we're going to show you how to Use Kitiage, which is a very short hand deflection. It's based off of sword, off of Kenjutsu. So we're going to show you how to use Kitiage to where um, you can deflect like somewhat of a jab. So from like a boxing standpoint, or, you know, street fighting standpoint, whatever. Um, like I said, this isn't really geared towards 100% towards MMA, but the idea of you know two punch combo or setting up for a jab, jab, and then a right cross type of thing. So. I'm going to show you how to defend against that, just single punch, and we're going to show it to you slow, so we're not going to really retract. We're going to show it to you slow, so then you're going to get some close-up shots of that as well, okay? So, so reverse stance, this deflection captures, okay? So as the punch pulls back, this captures. Now I'm hitting my chest with this, I'm showing it to you very slowly, but as this deflection happens, you want to be able to sit there and hit yourself in the shoulder, because this way how the deflection works is that if you push it away, that can make him spin into a back fist because of that momentum, so you end up getting hit, okay? So this actually allows this. Your shoulder actually deflects this to the point, to the point where the punch is gonna go past the shoulder. So when he does it relatively quick, this deflects. And as you can see, I'm, I'm hitting my shoulder with this, okay, which is completely fine. I want to be able to do that, okay? And this way. So I want to be able to do that because if I do this to where it's that way, it changes the direction of the strike. It's more of slapping it away and that's not what we want. Remember, you know, Aikido, we're absorbing the energy, we're absorbing the attack. And <laughs> most of our stuff with what we do with Aikido is letting the person go past us, not pushing them away because that's how we manage to take Kazushi that way. So one more time, so as he punches, deflect, right, deflect. And notice how I'm not moving in right now. I'm just getting this deflection. So as he punches, I'm not doing this. I'm not moving into the punch. Okay? You don't want to do that because if you do that, you're moving right into the hit. So this deflection, you're bringing the punch closer to your face faster by actually moving in with this. You don't want to move in just yet. You want to get to the point of deflect, and then you start to move. Deflect, then you move. Okay? So deflect, then you can move in. But first and foremost, you want to get this deflection. Get the idea of this deflection. And if you notice that my hands are down, I'm, my hands are not up in a, in a fighting posture like MMA type fighting or anything like that. My hands are down and for good reason because we develop a thing called RAM. It's called rapid arm movement, okay? You don't walk around the street with your hands up. You know, in MMA you have your hands up because it's a sport. So obviously, you know, you're told to, told to protect yourself at all times. We do it from the down position, from ha having your hands at your side, so you build up speed and you build up timing. If your hands are here and he throws that punch, okay, this is too easy. Okay, it's way too easy. So we make it difficult by putting our hands down, so then from there you're learning the timing aspect with the person that you're training with. So from a street perspective of this, if you're out on the street and you get confronted by somebody, you're not automatically going to have your hands up in this fighting posture. This is, this is making you look very aggressive. So your hands would be more at your center. You know, obviously never like this because this is just stupid. You know, I would never have my hands crossed like this. Plus, this looks very confrontational. So having your hands low or having your hands at your center doesn't really look like you're about to engage in any type of contact. Now, obviously, for sport, your hands are going to be up, ready to go. That's different. But what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to build speed with you to where you start off. Basically, you start off, you have your hands down, and you're doing the deflection from there. So, like I said, don't advance forward. Just get the deflection first. So go ahead and try it. High up. Okay, we're good to go? Good to go. So go ahead and try it. Okay. Is 
Is that okay? Yeah, that was good. The one, the one thing that I would suggest is slow down on your punching a little bit. Punch, then reset up, punch, then reset up. Instead of punch, 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 punch. You want to be precise with your movement. And um, this, if, if you're not, if you're not 100% on, on target with your hand deflection, you, it, you might get hit in the face. And that's, you know, from a learning perspective with this being new, take a little bit more time when you're practicing. Don't, don't rush into getting as many reps as you can. You know, learn the mechanics of it and get that down. You know, and then build up speed and stuff later. You know, but this is, uh, that was really good. It, I mean, for, you know, first time you doing this, and I'm actually kind of surprised. I mean, you know, it looked like the uke was pretty much on target with, you know, punching directly to your face, which is, which is right on. That's what you want. Because you never want the punches going over here. Because then, you know, that kind of takes away from the realism, you know, with, with us not getting punch, grab, kick, or take in the ground is extremely important. And those are the four main principles that we base our system off of on learning how to um, incorporate or deploy Te Sabaki. It's, it's very important that the attacks are honest. Um, and the rule of thumb with us is if you don't move, you get hit. And if you get hit, it's not the Uke's fault, it's your fault, you know. So everybody's in clear understanding of that here in my dojo that if you get punched in the face, it's because you didn't move. You know, you didn't execute and that's, um, can't blame the guy for doing his job. Can't blame the Uke for, for attacking properly. The only person you can blame is yourself for not, uh, for not executing the Te Sabaki the right way. So, um, so from that point, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to start entering in on the technique off of that. You know, we're gonna start getting a little bit more into that movement and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate a Temi Waza and I'm gonna come up through the center line and start throwing more of like an uppercut, not this way, but more of this uppercut this way right to the person's face. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. <coughs> you wanna move around, don't worry about that. Hey. Okay. So with this with this version now, it's this is one step further than what you did, okay, is that as the punch comes in, now you're gonna start to enter. So now that punch retraction happens. Okay, so as that punch happens, hey Yes. So as this punch happens, you're moving this way. You're moving into the person's into the person's space, almost like Tencon, how you would move around them. You know, you move into the space that's that's that they were occupying as they go to grab. So you're going to be taking up that space behind them. This is very similar to that. Okay, to where I'm going to be entering in on this, but I'm going to be taking that center line to where I can strike him at this point. So as he does this, I'm moving in. Okay, right here. Okay. This is going to be hard to do this and try to punch from there. Now, granted, you could do that here to here, okay? But from a boxing standpoint, you know, you want to get in close. You know, you want to be able to get in close to do something. So the idea is to get in and then here's that punch, okay? It's going to come straight up from that center line. So turn this way a little bit. So as he throws the punch, keep it there. See how this is all wide open right here, okay? So if this is tight, keep your open. If that's tight, there's a space right here to one side to flat, I can strike. So just keep that there, so draw that back and punch. So I can move in and I can hit. So if he punches and pulls back, I'm right there. I'm already applying the punch. So I'm able to get that uppercut relatively quickly and apply in a Temi Waza. Now, <clears throat> you have experience in the ring with an amateur MMA fighter. You know that they're on the defensive the whole time as well as the offensive. They're just not throwing punches out. They're not thinking about how to react when their opponent strikes. They're prepared for anything at any time, whether it's submission work, grappling, whatever, all stand up against kicks, punches, whatever, the clinch, they're, they're on the defensive with everything. They train, they're well-rounded athletes and mixed martial artists. So they train for any type of scenario that could happen within that ring. So this is one thing I don't think they train for is the fact that they're not used to somebody deflecting and moving into the attack. Most of the time when I see people start punching, they start bringing up their arms, they start protecting themselves, and they start moving back, they start retreating. Nobody really enters into the danger zone. Okay? You're really going in the path of harm's way when that, when that opponent or somebody on the street throws a strike. When that happens, you're moving into that. So you're putting yourself in harm's way, you're putting yourself in a position to get hit. This is where the hand techniques, the tesabaki, the evasions, come into play. What the hand deflections also does is it teaches you confidence. It teaches you not to fear being hit. 
And that's a, that's a huge thing in my opinion, that if, if you could overcome the fear, and most people have the fear of getting hit, especially if you're not a sport fighter, you don't want to get hit. You know, you don't want to get punched, grabbed, kicked, or taken to the ground, obviously. This helps you overcome that to the point where you feel comfortable, okay? If you understand where I'm coming from. This is gonna help you understand that, that feeling and get used to that feeling. So when the, the attack does come, you're able to move in with this in time then. A little quicker, a little quicker. Boom, you're right there, okay? So if you think you could use this for an uppercut, you can use this for, for a body shot as well. So if he throws that punch, bam, you can hit him right in the chest or in the sternum. So again, one more time. Here, you can get this right away and hit. And think about that. If that happened simultaneously, it's not the deflection and then a pause and then the punch, but if it happened at the same time, that shows that you have confidence. You can deal with that attack, deflect it, and respond with an attack of your own, a counter strike. But if you do them both at the same time, you can get amazing results from that, especially when the person on the, on the receiving end doesn't see it coming. So I'll demonstrate it a couple more times and then um, let's have you try it out and see how it works for you. So as he punches, let's go a little bit slow. Okay? So that punch happens, strike, okay? reflect, strike, reflect, body shot or sternum, now a little faster, boom, strike, strike, strike. And you can see Bob's going straight from my face. See, I'm not walking into this. I'm not deflecting this from here and keeping my head in the same spot. It's okay to move and blade yourself, meaning turning your body to thin yourself out to where you can get past this to where you can strike. Okay, a couple more. Flat. Flat. Okay. So go ahead and give that a shot and see how that works out for you. Hi, Dozer. Yeah, okay, so that wasn't bad. Um, what you want to watch out for is the uke, as he's punching, he's coming up on his rear foot, so his right leg is back. He's coming up on his toes, but his stance is too wide. He has to get more in that conventional type of like MMA fighting stance, and you're also going to want to narrow your stance down a little bit too. You guys have that conventional Aikikai, you know, Aikido stance where it's a little bit wider. You want to narrow it down a little bit more. And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so you can see what I'm talking about. So, uh, so Rod's going Rod's to gonna record this. Obviously, he's going to point down more at my feet and get a little bit closer version of this. You guys are here, and as your uke is striking, he's lifting his leg up. Now, this is correct in a sense to where if your feet were closer, because you're using your hips to deliver that power from the punch. The power is coming from your hips. But if you're this wide doing this, you're gonna to tend to be off balance more, especially when you get into the grappling sense and, and you're grabbing onto the person's arm or you're deflecting and you're, you're getting them into a, an arm lock or an arm drag of some sort, you're gonna be able to take their balance a lot easier. We also have to take into, into consideration that from a MMA street fighting perspective, people aren't gonna be standing with this wide of stances when they're throwing punches. They're gonna have a more Conventional stance to where it's more tight, to where it's more of that boxing type of stance. So when you strike, you want to be able to sit there and be mobile, be able to be able to be mobile. But if your stance is too wide and you're throwing this punch, it's almost to the point where you're, there's the possibility of losing balance. So you want this footwork to be short, okay? Also, again, take your time doing it. Don't rush through it, you know. take like a half a second, you know, the punch comes in, deflect and move, set up, deflect and move, set up, deflect and move, instead of this the whole time. You know, we wanna slow it down just a little, so try that one more time. See, that's better, that is much better. Okay. That was actually perfect. That was, that was a perfect demonstration of that, because now see how you put all the pieces together. We start off with you just learning the hand deflection, then we started off with the hand deflection and then the strike. We adjusted your footwork, your, your Ashi Sabaki, we adjusted that. That last demonstration of that was perfect. Plus it was controlled, okay, which, you know, over time, as you practice this, you can build up speed. So when that person's throwing that fast jab to set you up for that right cross, 
you, you're going to want to enter in off of the jab. You don't want to wait for the for the right cross. You know, when people are, you know, fighters, boxers, MMA guys, whatever, street fighters, they set up and they get in this, you know, street brawl conventional boxing stance, you know, they might be throwing this jab out there to set you up to see how you're going to move. So it's kind of like, don't fall for it. You know, the hand deflections are there. So you can sit there and you can tap the hand and you don't have to go through the full movement. And when that guy, when you feel like that guy's going to launch the, you know, the power hand to hit you, you enter in on the jab. And because you're entering in and you're, you're entering to the outside, that power hand is really not going to play a role because you're going to be past that point of where he could actually hit you. So you're not going to be in that spot to where you were, where that punch is being thrown at. Now, granted, you got to remember, fighters move rather quickly. They make adjustments on the fly. They don't sit there and go, oh, what just happened? You know, they're constantly following their target. They're constantly adjusting the way how how the person that their, their opponent is and how they're adjusting and how they're moving. So this has to be done extremely quickly. Um, what I like to tell a lot of my students and I and, you know, tell people throughout the world that question me or, question, or ask questions to me about this is that the majority of these hand deflections, actually all the hand deflections, it's a one and done thing. You can use this multiple times within a MMA type of scenario if it's, a, you know, obviously a, a sporting event and it's a controlled environment in the sense of a sporting event, eventually someone's going to get your timing down. They're going to get your game plan down and the hand deflections are going to be ineffective because if you constantly do this, do this, do this, they're eventually going to get you to do that and they're going to set you up. So they're going to throw a faint jab and then the cross right away. So when you try to do that, they're already coming with that punch. So you're not going to be able to deal with that punch. So you have to do this. You have to be able to get this Kiriage hand deflection literally off of the first time they throw that jab because they're not going to expect it. They're not going to see it coming. This is something that, this is where Aikido, you know, this type of Aikido works. You know, you don't see these hand deflections in, you know, in Iwama, you know, Tomiki. You don't see them in Yoshinkan, Seirokan, you know, traditional Aikikai systems. You don't see these hand deflections and the hand deflections are all based off of sword, Kenjitsu. What is Aikido based off of? It's based off of sword. You know, that and be able to handle multiple attackers with swords. You know, that's where Rondori comes in. That's where Zan Shin, you know, that's how you build Zan Shin is acute awareness. So you know your whole entire surrounding. So you know who's coming at you from all angles. But if you're dealing with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, especially in the sport environment, you don't have to worry about people jumping on your back or doing anything like that. So you can focus on that opponent and on the street, you got to take that into consideration that there might be more than one person. It, this guy might have friends, you know. So, you know, with our philosophy is you need to take him out and you need to take him out as fast as humanly possible and dump him on the ground just in case he does have friends to where then now you can negotiate what's going on with them. You don't ever want somebody jumping on your back. And, you know, we can save that for other YouTube videos and when somebody does jump on your back and try to put you in a chokehold, you know, there's... There's a lot of effective ways that I can show you to get out of that, you know, and it's not it's not so not so much necessary using um, jujitsu type escapes. Because remember that's sport fighting. In the real world, somebody jumps on your back and puts you in a headlock. There are no rules. Anything goes. So that's how that's how we train. It's anything goes. We're not looking for a referee to stop the fight or jump in and you know whatever. When it's on the street, it doesn't matter. It's whatever it takes to win, whatever it takes to survive. You know what I'm saying? So those are some things that you're definitely going to want to consider and, um, you know, do some more research on. And this is stuff that we can do later on in other videos because, you know, surprise everybody. This is this is a first video out of God only knows how many we're going to end up doing. You know, we've, uh, we've had some pretty lengthy conversations and uh, both Rokas and I agree that this is not a, a one-time thing. And um, this is going to be awesome for the both of us. You know, I'm going to be able to help him. And I don't know how far away Lithuania is from the United States, but I'm willing to bet it's probably three, 4,000 miles away. And we're doing this off of a Skype video. So this is, this is pretty impressive. And I'm excited to be here as much as Rokas is excited to be here. And I hope that I'm speaking appropriately for you and you agree with that. So we're going to move on to the next thing. So now we're going to show you how to enter in. Um, so we did the Kiriage and then the Atemi Waza to the face. Now we're going to do the Kiriage and we're going to raise up to the outside of the hand. So instead of coming inside the body, 
we're going to come to the outside and we're going to apply the Sudiage movement. And the way out the Sudiage movement is we're going to get it to the point where we can enter in and get a neck crank or some type of choke. Okay? You ready? Here we go. Okay, Bob. So, with that being said, this is what we're doing next. So now we're going to incorporate the first hand deflection and we're going to get this second hand deflection. Now this is very important that the second hand deflection isn't swatting away and it's not doing this. Okay, so as he punches with that hand, it's not doing this because that opens that up for this for this punch to come straight in and nail you right in the face. So if you pull back with your hand this way, you get punched. See how this is all open right there? So you got to be very mindful of that. So when this happens, it's not pull back, pull back. So it's it's not that because then here comes the punch. Now can you deflect? Because we're ambidextrous, all Aikido guys, all Aik Aikidoka, Aik you know, Aikido in period, period is just ambidextrous in, its, ambidextrous in itself. So when that punch happens and you do this wrong and that punch happens again, I, you can punch, 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 punch. You can deflect, okay? So one, two, you can deflect with that and then you can move in to whatever lock you may see fit, choke or whatever. That's just kind of going, it's going off of what I'm originally going to show you now, but it's just... So you have the idea that you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this because you're setting yourself up for the secondary punch. Okay, like I said, you want to enter in off of that first jab. So this hand deflection does this on this angle. It's this, it's not that. This deflection happens here, okay? So you're here and watch your punches here. The punch pull back, you know, you're here where then you can move in. Now, moving in isn't dropping the hand and trying to move in. You have to move in when this punch happens. This has to happen, this has to happen, and then you have to move all at the same time and get behind the punch. So you're to the inside of him because this deflection is gonna come right across his body. Okay, Rod, move that way so you can see this. This is coming right across his body at that point to where you can move in for this choke on however you need to choke. If you do it this way, here, and you come wide, he puts his hand up and he stops you. Okay, then from there, he could easily grab onto your wrist or yeah, or put in that position, or he gets you, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, or he gets you into this lock, okay? You want to avoid that. So, if it's here and you're coming wide, he stops, punch pull comes here and why he stops you. And then he moves right into another technique. Come around the other way, Rod, so we can see this. And from there, he can lock you up. Okay, so you want to avoid that. So this movement has to be here first. Get that movement, okay? Here, get this movement. And then it moves into that, to where you can lock him up. And then take him down, okay? So the first movement is just getting the idea of this, okay? Keep the hand out there so you can see that. So it's this. Remember, I can see my hand, it's not over here. It's right here, okay? And this could also incorporate a strike, right here, strike, and then you have this hook on the arm, which this is a Kaitanagi variation that we do. So you have the ability to do that. If you can't get in on the choke, you this way, strike, cut the arm, and you have that. But that's later on. So let's just first get this down, of this, right? Notice how the hand's right here. It's taking center at that point. It's taking center at that point. Okay? So go ahead and try that. High dozel. Remember, go slow, take your time, be precise. High dozel. Okay, not bad. That's not bad. Here's, here's some small tips for you. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Gotta have your hands energized. If your hands are loose, okay, you're, you're try I get it, we're, we're Aikidoka, you know, obviously I train a little bit differently than you do. You're, you're, what I'm seeing is that you're trying to use this internal, this internal key power by having your hand loose. You know, you want this to be extremely taut. You want this to have energy coming through it. If it's loose, everything else is going to be somewhat loose. You want this to be strong. You know, if somebody throws a punch, you know, if, if you got into a street altercation and somebody throws a punch and you, and it was unexpected, this would be very hard to be loose and try to deflect that because this is going to be weak. But if this is strong, 
This is different, okay? I can sit here all day long and pound on this. Someone can push me. That's internal key, because you're extending this, okay? But if it's loose, and you're trying to do this, this fluff, you know, this type of fluff stuff, you and I both know, because we've had this conversation, that that stuff really is ineffective. So you want that to be strong. So when you're doing this deflection, this is strong, this is strong. You mean business. Remember, always keep in mind the four main principles, not getting punched, grabbed, kicked, or taken to the ground. So you have to be, you have to be precise and you have to be powerful. And um, it's not hard to do. You're doing it, but these little pointers of this, I can see that this is loose when this should really be, yes. see the difference? It's loose versus tight. You want it tight. You know, take a ton like a hand blade. So you want this to be able to cut. If you had a dull knife, okay, if you had a butter knife, can you cut a steak with a butter knife? No, you can't. You need a sharp knife to cut steak. So it's the same thing. If you're trying to deflect an arm with a butter knife, it's not going to be effective. But if you have this sharp blade, take a ton of sharp sword-like posture with this deflection, you're going to be a lot more, more powerful and you're going to be able to control the person a lot easier. Okay? So height one more time with this tighter hand type movement. Remember, Keep it to the point where you can see your hand or where you can enter in. Because we're moving, we're gonna start moving quickly onto the next thing. So hi Ozo, go ahead and try. Hi. There, that's good. That's good. See, see one little one little tip I give you, and you can see a huge improvement. Can you feel the difference, Rokas? Can you yeah. feel how much you're in you're you're in more control of the uke when you're doing it that way? When you're stronger, when you have that stronger movement, you're in much more control and we just witnessed this. We just saw it. That one little tip of this, of your hand being tight and, and describing why, your it's movement just changed. It's a lot more martial than just it's, sloppy. Come on in. Come on in. Tell them. What are you saying? Bob wants to... Saying, it's also a lot more martial. You know, it's more like, like Len said, more business oriented rather than just sloppy Aikido technique that a lot of people think they can do or execute. So this is like a perfect foundation. That's what you'd should be focused on before, during, and after the technique. And that was, that was perfect that you displayed that. It was, that was spot on, the way you were doing that. That was good. I, I mean, I hope you can feel the difference between what you were doing versus what you just did. Because that's night and day. And the great thing is, we have this on film. So you're gonna be able to see the difference. You'll be able to compare yourself watching you do this and then watching, once I give you tips and pointers on how to improve, you can see the difference immediately. And that is great. That shows me that you have a complete open mind and um, you're accepting the teachings. And that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's move into the same movement, but now we're going to start entering into where we can get a choke. And what, what I mean by choke is I'm not talking, you know, MMA, sport fighting, you know, application of, you know, rear naked choke or whatever, but getting into the point where you can get a, a neck crank or a jaw lock and the way how we do this, where we lock up our hands is we don't, we don't grab our hands this way. We put the thumb between these two fingers and then we lock that up because then this is harder to peel off. Once you have this, if somebody starts grabbing on your arm and they start peeling off, if you're, if you're holding this way, they can peel this off because I don't have my fingers interlocked on my thumb. And then you're going to want to cinch this. So we're going to go through that so you can see how that's done. So we're going to go through the same hand deflection movement, but now we're going to move into getting the choke. Okay, we're going to show it slow and we're going to show it deliberate. We're not going to show the punch pull back completely. It's going to be a punch, slight pull back, so then you can get the idea of where your arm needs to go. And then we're also going to show you how to push the shoulder into the, basically push the shoulder of your uke to roll them into this, into this choke hold. Okay, so you're gonna get kiriage, suriage, one in a, you know, one simultaneous movement, and then you're gonna enter in on this angle, okay? So I'm coming across this angle, so once I get this deflection, I'm coming across this angle. So if he started to retract, and I'm fast and explosive with the tight hand, the, you know, the sharp take a tonic hand, if he starts to retract, He's basically pulling me into this position because of where his arm is, the way it's retracting. Then from there, I'm gonna push on his shoulder and I'm gonna push on his shoulder in a circular fashion. So counterclockwise, I'm gonna push on this to turn him into interlocking my fingers and choking him at that point. And now I'm using my forearm to get the choke 
I can get a side choke with more of a, a sankaku jime, which is a triangle choke in Japanese, or I can get it to where the forearm is right on his, on his, air, his air pipe, his, uh, his windpipe, trachea, and I can cinch this into my body as I apply. Do you need to see it again or is that good? Uh, no, it was good. We can do it. Right off the bat, perfect. Cinch it down, Rokas. Bring him down so he, he collapses. Bring him down. That, look good? that was really good. Nice it's looking you. really good. I mean, you got Bob over here complimenting you and that's, that's a rarity. Bob rarely ever does that. So we're gonna move on to the next thing where it's gonna be a punch. We're gonna incorporate the Kiyage. We're gonna eliminate the, the Sudiage. And we're gonna use this from cutting down and then cutting the elbow. And it's, it's a version of Kaitanage that we do. Instead of actually throwing Kaitanage and throwing the Uke away and making them roll, this is more of a submission takedown with using the arm. And then I'm gonna show you how to do the standing pin and you'll be able to see this with the footage that we send you much more clearly than what you're gonna see here. So this is, um, you'll have this better footage of, of understanding how the arm pin works and, and how you can submit somebody having them face down on the ground and I'll make out the pointers. I'll tell you what the pointers are with that and what makes it so effective. Okay, so here we go. The next technique that we're gonna move on to is basically it's, it's a, a more street applicable kaitanage for us. You know, all you guys know, all the Aikido people know, essentially kaitanage means rotary throw, which usually ends up with a forward ukemi or forward break fall, depending on how you do it. Well, the way how we're gonna do it here is this is gonna be done off of a punch or off of a grab or a shove, whatever it may be. It could be from a shove where somebody single arm shoves you right in the chest. Um, you're gonna cut this, okay, so this kiriage movement is really gonna turn into a sotogiri movement, which is an outside cut. But this is gonna cut and come down, hook the elbow, and you're gonna apply the elbow and get them locked up into a kaitanage. So to show this very basically, as the punch comes in, this deflection happens here, okay? You're not so, you're not so much doing kiriage this way. You're gonna be cutting this, but as he retracts, this is going to follow. From there, you can put your hand up into his face or go right to the side of his head. But as this follows, camera follows, it's going to hook under his arm. So this is gonna be basically in front of the forearm and bicep. And then your hand, strong hand, take a ton of, is gonna cut the elbow down at that point to where you can put him on the ground, okay? Now, because there's no rules in street fighting, who's to say that you can't knee him in the face as you're taking him down to the ground? So as that punch happens, cut, boom, knee right in the face. Once you have the cut, you can lock your hand up on this and you can hold onto the arm if you need be. You can grab the head and you can start knee striking to the face at that point, okay? Then from there, you can take him straight down to the ground, you can throw him over, whatever you want. But the idea is to avoid being struck or avoid being shoved. So if he was gonna shove me, okay, boom, he's shoving me to get me out of the way, right? And we're not in a martial stance, so we're just thinking street application. So he comes up, he's, you know, blah, 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 you know, this, that, whatever, and then he goes to shove, wham, okay? That's pretty typical. When somebody walks up to you and they just, get out of my face, that type of thing. So if he does that to me, get out of my face, see? That's strong, and it might follow up with a punch. So when he does that again, you cut it, wham, wham, you're taking him down to the ground. And at that point, you have this locked up. Once you have this here, you don't lose this connection. You allow this hand to ride up. As he bends his wrist, you put your palm on the top of his hand, like how you would with a Nikyo. And you're applying, essentially, a standing Nikyo pin. And I gotta be careful because this hurts. You lock this all up so you got this straight line of pressure all the way down as you're applying the Nikyo. Now, important thing for Kemi wise, look at how his head, his head is looking away from me. Look at his hips. His, his left leg is bent, his hips are facing that way, his head is facing that way. If he turns his hips the other way as I'm applying this, it's gonna hurt even more because he's making it hurt more. If he turns his head the other way as I apply this, it's gonna hurt even more. This pin is designed to push this pressure, or push this shoulder, straight down to the ground and bury it into the ground to where he can't move. You completely immobilize him this way. 
Okay? So we're going to do it from the other side. So do it off, off the left hand. Right. So, uh, yeah, so say, you know, he goes to shove. Bam! He's going to shove. Okay, he goes to shove. He cut. Come down. Now, this is not over the top of the shoulder. Because if I do that, he just raises his arm. He raises his arm into this point and gets me into a lock. Now I'm in trouble. That's extremely tight. Okay? So you're cutting the elbow. So you're cutting this down, grabbing his head, knee strike if you had to, put him down on the ground, and then my leg goes right behind his arm. So it acts as that support. Then from there, I can grab his elbow and adjust. See how he's tapping? That's how fast this works. Or you line this all straight up in a row and you apply immediate pressure down, then you can lock and you can hold him this way at that point. And then if you had to strike, you have the ability to strike. Okay, so one more. So we're gonna do this off of what we call Mune Dori. It's really a shove, but instead of calling it Mune Ski, we just call it Mune Dori because it can be applied to where they grab you. If they grab you, they're gonna follow up and punch. So it's gonna be more along the lines of this. So if they grab you. So we do it from the perspective of get out of my face, that type of thing. Okay, and this obviously can be done from real Katadori as well. So you have that shove. You know, when you think in the clinch, you know, MMA guys are clinching up, you know, they can push them back. That's where you can apply this. Because as they're pushing, you're absorbing. Okay, so if you're doing something MMA, sparring with somebody, and somebody starts pushing you back, as they push you back, you cut this down, and you can apply that technique. So you take their energy, right? Another Aikido principle. You're taking their energy, the momentum of attack, you're redirecting it, and you're using it against them to neutralize the threat, to be able to take them down by the way of their own power. So they actually give that to you. So you kind of set them up. You get them to the point where you draw them in. So when you draw them in, you cut this down right away. But you have to be fast. This has to be tight. Yes, yes. Bravo, dude, that was awesome. That was awesome. One thing I noticed that the uke started giving you a little bit of a problem when you're doing it, and that's, that's quite all right. Cutting the elbow solves that. When you cut the elbow hard, that is gonna, regardless if he starts resisting, you always gotta remember, it's, it's kinda like you gotta beat him to the punch, so to speak. So you actually have to beat him to that technique. So when he's going to shove you, you gotta get him before he makes contact, and then you have to cut this, redirect that, and focus on cutting the elbow hard because that's gonna help you take them down to the ground really fast. There were a couple times when you got kind of caught up in that to where you, you did the technique and then you had to torque on them a little. The idea is do the technique with power the whole way through. If you encounter that again, just like I showed in the beginning of the demonstration, you can knee strike them in the face to soften them up. That will work every time. You knee strike them once in the mouth, they're gonna forget about this and you're gonna dump them on the ground and you're gonna get a pretty effective pin and takedown rather quickly. You know, a lot of it has to do with your balance too. You know, if you have good balance, which Aikido people, you know, we work on our balance and our stability. So you're automatically gonna have that. So when you cut this down, you're gonna be able to bring that knee up. As his head's coming down, your knee's coming right to his face. So it's perfect. He's coming down, your knee's coming up. That's gonna be devastating, especially in, you know, a street, street scenario or MMA. If you're able to cut this through, you can do that knee strike and pop them right in the face and take them down the ground. Then that standing pin, um, it's effective. It's very, it's very effective. It works. When you're doing it right and you're applying that Nikyo pin or that Gokyo pin, you're bending that wrist. You're crushing that wrist. You're trying to touch the palm to his forearm. You know, just like with Nikyo, you're trying to apply that really hard. So there's going to be a lot of pain there. And then you're locking everything up. You're drilling his shoulder into the mat. So he's, he's in a world of hurt at that point. If, you know, once you get it and you're fast and you're precise, um, it's effective. It's very effective. So we're going to move on to one more technique. I think we only have like about 10 more minutes left or so or 15 more minutes. So <clears throat> we're going to move on to a shoulder grab, like a clinch type of thing on how you can get out of the clinch. Move into a technique from that. But first, we're going to show you how to get out of a clinch. And we're going to work it off of like real katadori. So from the street perspective as well, somebody goes to shove you, 
one hand is going to cut down, the other hand is going to cut up, and that same hand that's cutting down is going to circle into that kaitanage. Okay, so you're going to end up doing this, grabbing to where then you can lock them up into, into whatever, whatever presents itself. So we're going to work off of that, and then I'm going to show you a basic way on how to work a front kick deflection and how you can move in from that as well. Okay? He goes to shove just like with the mune dori, you're doing real kata. So this motion as he shoves, get out of my face, he's shoving. Okay, we're showing it from the basic shove first, but then we're going to show you how to implement this off of an actual clinch to where you're doing this. Okay, to where you can move in, whatever, or get over to the point where you can lock this up. To where then you have that, to where you can hammer fist, knee strike, whatever, take him out, right down to the ground, you still have his arm lock and start punching. Okay, so there's a lot of little things that are involved with that. But from just from the shove, one hand comes up, the other hand, you're cutting this this way. As that happens, okay, so you can see this rod come around, this whole other way. The whole idea of this is here, capturing this. This hooks over, your right, your left hand hooks over like the kaitanage. So you're locking this up, and this is all within the center. Then at that point, you can have the head and start striking the head, or if you have this locked up, you can grab onto his hand, take him down the ground, whatever, okay? It's the idea of just getting the point of this. Cutting this through, and you have that strike. If he gives you your hand, now you got Yubi Dori. Strike to the face, now you got Kiji Shime, okay? Then you can go right over the top of his head, and you can get this choke, or get the choke this way, and apply, okay? If you, you get him down on the ground, now you can apply that type of neck crank to where you're pushing his chin into his chest. Okay, so again, so as he comes in, he shoves, boom. Okay, he shoves, boom, harder. Right. Ball harder. Good. Okay, right here, but right away, you have that. See how he, he went down at that point, so now that's fine because we, we want to be able to work off of anything like that. So from here, you can put him right into that arm pin. His arm is underneath his arm, that's fine. You can move this way, okay? Switch that over and get this other arm lock. Take his arm this way and apply Gokyo as well. So as he attacks, bang. As he attacks, move in, capture right away. You have this locked up. See how my hands across his face? He can't see. Now I can strike to the jaw, strike to his throat, whatever. I can hook him over, I can throw him, I can push him through at that point. Take him down, arm lock him this way, even right there. Very effective at that point. So let's do it from this side. And then oh, shove. Good. <coughs> Cut right away. I'm in this position. Move through. Take him down. So now I have this lock here. You okay? If you wanted to add something, you step in and step on his foot, and you're applying that lock as well. So the initial movement is just getting this. So you're cutting through the center line with your right hand. This hand isn't doing that, it's doing this. Almost like ten shinage, heaven and earth. Right, heaven and earth, ten shinage. So it's ten shinage, but it's a lock control into that position and straight down. Okay, so one more time. So it's ten shinage and cut. Then knee strike, whatever. Okay? We actually call this hand deflection ten shiage. Like suriage, kiriage. You know, ten shiage. So ten shiage, you're cutting, right away. You have that lock, move through, arm pin. Okay? So I'll do it one more time slowly for you. So it's cut, you're absorbing. Taking him down, grab his head, push his head through at that point. You can get him in this lock position or take him straight down to the ground. And then your knee points at his face, his elbows on your shin, and you're applying that lock. Okay? I don't know. Have fun with that one. Hi, right, go ahead. It's here. But that's the beginning. And then you push on the top of his head and push his head through. Yes, push it through in Tenkan. There you go. Take him down to the ground. Yep, yep, straighten out his arm. Straighten his arm out. 
and then apply your shin to the back of his elbow. Hyperextend his arm. Get his arm to extend. Close. See, his shoulder's up off the ground. You gotta get him to where he's flat. Put him flat on his back. Put him flat on his back. Now apply it. Lift up, grab your, take your right hand and grab his wrist. Yeah, now apply your knee to the back of his elbow. Put your knee to the back of his elbow. Now pull his, pull his hand towards you as you push with your knee. Did he just tap? Yep, then it worked. There you go, that worked. Try it again. See, he's picking this stuff up like, you know, one or two times he has it, that's great. Take him down, good. Good, that was good. That was really good. Okay, you see how fast he's tapping compared to the first time you did this, yeah. the second time you did this? Yeah. He's tapping a lot faster because you're executing. You're, you're, see, you're not, you're not playing the Aikido bullshit game of waiting for the uke to attack you and then you're trying to, you know, blend with this love, peace, and harmony shit. Okay, you're actually taking action. You're executing. And by executing, what are you getting? You're getting results. You're moving faster. You're being more explosive. Technique is being applied. You see how these things are working. You know, everything's working for you. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you a basic way in how to defend against a front kick, okay? So this can be worked off of a front like snap kick. It can be worked off of like a front like heel stomp kick. Um, you kind of see the combination of both in MMA where guys do the front snap kick, but then they come up and they try to push you away with the kick. You know, that's called the heel stomp kick. And then there's, a, I've seen it where it's actually a little bit of both all within one movement. Um, but we're going to show you how to defend using a hand deflection and how to defend a front snap kick. Okay. What I'm going to show you is basically how you put your arm out. It deflects off your arm. So when that kick comes in, it's going to deflect. The idea is not to cut down, because as you cut down, you're gonna hit that shin bone when you do that with your forearm, and obviously the leg is probably gonna win and your arm's gonna get broke. But the idea is you're not pointing straight, you're pointing on this angle, okay? So as that kick happens, you're pointing on this angle, you're not pointing straight. So when the kick happens, the kick's gonna hit and it's gonna ride, but you're also gonna wanna get to the point to where you shift your back leg a little bit so you're not getting hit in that lower region because we all know when you get hit there it's it's a it's a bad day so the idea is to get this deflection to where then you can move in and do something else so i'm going to show a basic version of this okay so as that kick comes in obviously he's not trying to kick me in the groin you know from mma rules you can't strike to the groin so the kick has to come to the gut or has to come to the face so as that kick comes in Remember, you're not, I, you're not trying to chop this down. You're not trying to do that, okay? Rod, you're not trying to chop this down. You're not trying to do that, because that is gonna, that's gonna mess up your forearm. Right there, right there. So as this happens, you're also not doing this. Slow, dude. You're also not doing this in line with the kick, because you're gonna bust your fingers that way. So you're getting this angle it's basically in the same position that your body is. So you're not completely square. The way out of your stance is your arm is gonna ride that same angle, but it's gonna be close to the body. So as he kicks, this just deflects right there. Okay, kick up a little bit higher. So it deflects, okay, right? go ahead, just deflex. Straight in, deflex, okay? You can punch this out or you can just automatically just do that. So as he kicks, right there. As he kicks, right there. Straight in. Straight in. Height. Push through. Boom. Good. Okay. See how he's also stepping too? People are going to think that they're going to make contact. So they're thinking that at that second, they're making this contact. But because you deflect, you take away the target. So that automatically that the body is what stops them from leaning forward. You know what I'm saying? When they make contact, that kick happens to where they make contact, boom, it's right in the gut. They still have control over their balance and their stability. But when that kick gets deflected, 
because they think that they're actually going to make point of contact. They're going to hit their target. Once that happens, they lose their balance and they take a step forward. And then that puts us in the position to move in and do something. So as he kicks, okay, it's deflection, boom, now you have that choke all over again. Now the one choke I was going to show you, if you couldn't get the triangle choke, is taking your hand and putting it right behind your neck. Focus in on that rod. Come over here. So you get this right behind your neck, and then you straighten up at that point. Then you can grab onto this arm, hook onto the hook onto the arm. He's going to try to escape at that point, and then you squeeze to apply. So that's another way of doing a choke off of this, because you're not going to be able to probably get this triangle choke. So you're going to move in for a single arm rear naked choke. So the deflection first, get the deflection of that. See where he's at? Look at where my hands are at too. So as he does that, oh, bam, I have this strike right away. So he kicks strong and fast, you're boom, you hit right away, so you can move in. Now, for us, what we would normally do is a technique called sayunage, which is pretty much the same thing as, you know, kokyunage. But our sayunage is straight in. So this can turn into that back fist type of thing. So I'm just going to show you that and how that would work from there to where it's just deflection, boom, and it's sayunage right there. Then you have this pin of being able to pin him out, and then it goes across his face. You move that across his face, and you're using the fingers to utilize that pin. So one more time for that. So it's deflection right into his face, and then apply. That's our basic form for sayunage with a kick defense. Now, you want to add a splash of street applicable technique. Now you have this. Boom, strike to the face, elbow, whatever. So that can happen really quickly at that point. A flex, bang, right in, elbow. So you can hit him multiple times with that back fist. This is the street version of sayunage, of flex, back fist, hammer fist, right to the sternum, whatever, okay? So the idea of this, to get to the flex, okay? Flex, okay? Flex, okay? One more time, okay? Flush. Front kick. Flush. Good. And you know, this is the first time you've ever done this, and for a first timer, gotta say, man, that's that's fantastic. It really is. I mean, a lot of people, you know, because of their previous Aikido experience, it's you know, the the one thing I love about collaborating with you is that you have a complete open mind. Um, you know, the whole empty glass concept of you know fill the glass up with knowledge. I'm gonna come in here pretending like I know nothing, you know, and, and just be really open and receptive to, to, to different teachings. I mean, dude, if, if the whole Aikido world could be like that, we wouldn't have a problem trying to evolve Aikido. Aikido would evolve just naturally because people have different concepts and ideas and different training methodologies, you know, and if, if people, you know, were, were um, if, if they were receptive to those ideas and concepts, we'd be way ahead of the game than what we are now. You know, the fact that you could do this means that anybody can do this. But I think part of the reason why not anybody can do this is because ego gets in the way and they don't, you know, they think that this is the only way Aikido is done. And well, my sensei doesn't teach me this, my sensei doesn't teach you that. Well, you know what, I got news for you. Not every sensei on the planet is right. I'm not saying that I'm right, but I can tell you what, speaking from life experience, this shit works. The other stuff, not so much, especially when it's all about, you know, flower arranging and tea ceremony. I mean, it's when you're talking about, you know, a dance form Aikido, it's like you, you can't defend against stuff like that. And you, you have to be fast and explosive. When somebody attacks you on the street, they're not telling you, okay, I'm gonna kick you in five seconds, be prepared, here it comes. It just happens. So you have to have, you have to be within the moment. So you have to make that choice within the moment of how to handle that situation. And if, and if you think, you're, you're gonna get smashed. You know, you can't think about things. You know, the whole empty mind thing, mushin, you know, empty heart, empty thought, you know, having empty mind, you know, nothing cluttering your vision or clouding your vision from, from being able to defend yourself and what you think is necessary and to be able to execute. That's another thing, you're executing. And that is awesome.
it's, um, I, I think from, from my past experience with, with traditional Aikido and, and uh, watching a lot of other traditional Aikido people is they wait for the moment. You know what I'm saying? You have to capture that moment. You have to move in. You have to execute within that moment. Because if, if you hold back, you know, if you hesitate for one second, that could, that could be enough to get you a serious ass beating. You know what I'm saying? You have to be able to execute. You have to be able to be decisive. Take action. Be explosive within your movement. You know, you can still follow the IQ principles of not hurting somebody and still be able to do this if, if you need to, okay? And, and that's, that's the part that really confuses me about the Aikido world is, is that they, they get caught up in the whole, you know, this is a nonviolent martial art. Well, guess what? Newsflash, this is, a, this is not a nonviolent world. We live in, in a very violent world nowadays and you can't wait for this shit to happen. You know, you gotta be prepared. It's the, you know, prepare for the, you know, train for the best, prepare for the worst. Yeah, totally. I mean, I also wanted to say what, what you mentioned. There's so much talk about peace and harmony Aikido, but the styles between the schools between Aikido, the teachers of Aikido, they're, they're so much in collision. Everyone has the best style, everyone has the best school, and, and everybody gets stuck in there. It's like water, which doesn't move. Eventually, it just starts to stink. And I feel a lot of that has happened. So this video of, uh, for us to collaborate, to, for me to learn from you and and to have this connection, I feel that's a great example for everyone that this is possible. We can do this together. We can grow. We're all Aikido. We don't need to be, be all closed up and, and critique each other. So I'm very, very happy this is happening. Yeah, we don't need to be divided. My style of Aikido has always been looked upon as like the black, black sheep of Aikido. And being the black sheep of Aikido, we're not bad people. We're not all about, you know, kicking ass and taking names. We're about survival. We're about making this stuff applicable on the real world. And anything that I could do to help guys like you. This was such an honor for me to collaborate with you on this video. And to be able to have somebody that's, that's sincerely interested in seeing these things. That, you know, that makes me feel great. Because I hope other people take from this and, and see your learning experience. And see how well you pick this up. And the more you practice this and the more that we do videos together and, and I show you other stuff, you're going to pick it up even faster. I think you're going to take this and you're going to adapt some of these principles to your Aikido and your Aikido is going to skyrocket. Obviously, you know, your explorations of Aikido have really gone away from being the brainwashed side like, you know, we've talked about. The rest of the Aikido world really needs to identify with that and, and you know, this isn't about my system's better than your system like what you were saying. I'm, you know, I'm not saying that my system that what I do is better than everybody else's, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, I have things that are way better than what everybody else is doing. And the thing is, they're not really so much full techniques. It's just the, the pure example of not getting punched, grabbed, kicked, or taken to the ground. We're the only one that carries that, that methodology or that philosophy, because we obviously completely understand what happens in the real world. We're not you know, we're not living in the Aikido daydream thinking that, oh, you know, I can do all this fluff, you know, touch this Aikido and that stuff's going to work in the real world. It's not. I have enough, enough life experience to be able to back that up. I have a lot of street experience with this style of Aikido and it works. And like I said, it's not about me being better than everybody else. I want to share. I want people to grow from this. You know, that's what my intention is. I have a YouTube channel and I do things a little bit differently than what everybody else does and what might work for me might not work for you, you know, but the fact that we're collaborating and we were two different people, you know, completely different, you know, we, you know, opposites attract and the way how we connected with this, this turned out great as far as I'm concerned and I hope the people that watch this and view this start to have a more open mind kind of like what you did and, and more of this needs to be done. My, my work is far from over and I, and you're just beginning your path and you, you know, your work is going to be far from over. There's a lot, you know, that you want to do that we've talked about. And I think, dude, you're, you know, you're not just sitting there spinning your wheels like everybody else, you know, talk is cheap. Stop fucking talking about shit and start executing. And that's what everybody else is doing and you're executing. And that's what separates you from everybody else, you know, and that's awesome. I respect the hell out of you for that, man. I really do. So that's pretty much all that I got to say.
<laughs> yeah, thank you so much. The respect is mutual, and I'm really looking forward to bring this to the people and to also see what, what comes up next, because this is definitely not yeah. the end. <laughs> so, definitely. So.